What's happening, YouTube? So today I want to start off this tutorial with a kind of conceptual framework. This tutorial is really exploring the, the basic architecture of the Quark wave state. What kind of synthesis is this? What is it trying to do? So Korg says that the wave state uses wave sequencing synthesis. Now this term wave sequencing synthesis is something invented by Korg, but really what it's based on is a form of audio synthesis known as concatenative synthesis. So what the hell is that? Concatenate, this big fancy word, just means to put things together in a chain to take kind of disparate items and link them one after the next. So for concatenative synthesis, you have an audio pool of different samples that you then take fragments from and you bring those fragments together and you create a new sound. To understand how concatenative synthesis works, it's good to know the basic anatomy of a sound. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to dissect a sound into two component parts. At the very beginning, maybe say the first you know, 30 to 50 milliseconds, you have the attack or transient. That part of the sound is very noisy. Uh, it's very chaotic. It's the initial sound that you hear. Uh, and a lot of the sound's characteristics actually come from the attack. And we'll hear that later on in the tutorial. After that, you have either the body or decay. So these terms I'm going to use interchangeably. Um, and that's the part of the sound that's sustained, uh, that, that uh, has less frequency content, less noisy, less chaotic. And so within the wave state, what we can do is take just the attack of a certain kind of sound and then push that up against, concatenate it with the body or decay of another sound. And so that's what we're gonna to do today. Let's get to it. Two ways that we're gonna approach this. The first is to use just one layer and to interpolate between our sample lanes. And then the second approach is to use two layers, uh, A and B. Our layer A will serve as our transient or our attack, and our layer B will serve as the body of the sound or the decay. So using the first method, let's uh, begin with layer A and let's get to our initial performance. Make sure you've hit WC steps. Then we'll go to our sample lane and we have our classic sign going into a saw. Now let's think about what sound we want for our attack. So there's actually a whole bunch of attacks in the core wave state, it's its own category. Those attacks are, are nice, but just for the sake of our demonstration, let's go ahead and use a classic sound that everyone will recognize. So not everyone might recognize a granular bell or something like that. So let's go ahead and take, um, say, the sound of an acoustic piano. have an acoustic piano and it's crossfading into our saw wave. Now let's also take another sound that's distinct from a piano, uh, but which everyone will recognize. So maybe let's go to woodwinds and see what we got here. Maybe a uh, clarinet. Clarinet's pretty good. Let's go for the clarinet. So right now you can hear that that first two seconds, you have the piano attack, then the clarinet. Now we can isolate the attack of the piano by changing our timing so that our timing's really short. And all we hear is the piano's attack. And then we'll have it loop at the clarinet. So you get just the attack of the piano and then the body is only the clarinet sound. So you don't hear that crossfade back with the first sample. And so in order to isolate the uh, clarinet sound, we want to play with our loop start and end time. So right now we have A1, A2. Both of these are looping, but let's just move that loop start over one. 
Now it'll start on A1, but it'll only loop on A2. So let's listen. There we go. And so let's go to our timing lane. And right now it's only a length of one. So let's extend that. You can hear that this second timing lane doesn't quite have the right parameters that we're looking for. So we want this second lane to be uh, fairly long since there's a long sustain on that clarinet sample and with a long crossfade so you don't really hear that it's going between the two samples. And for our first step, we want that to be quite short because we're only trying to isolate the transient from the piano sound. And we also want it to crossfade into the second sound just so it's a, a smooth and clean transition. Uh, so let's make this duration pretty short. So maybe, um, I don't know, let's try 100 milliseconds, so 0.1 seconds let's try. and let's extend this and give it a nice generous crossfade let's listen so Right now our loops, you can hear that there's a little click that's happening. Our loop start is at A1. So it's going back to this really fast first step. Let's make our loop start also at A2. Now let's listen. So you can hear we have a piano that begins the sound and going into a clarinet sound. And of course we can play with this. Maybe we'll just do a few more just to demonstrate uh, variations. So we have pluck here into the clarinet sound. Maybe we can have it go into So our brain recognizes a sound largely based off of the transient. So even though we're, we have a very short uh, first uh, step here, we can still hear the sound. We can even make that step a bit shorter and let's turn our crossfade down. We'll make this, let's say, let's go for 50 milliseconds. experimenting here and just trying to find the boundaries of where we can still distinguish the transient and where it becomes imperceptible. Let's use a different sample for that first one. I mean, use a different sample. So we're just playing with this. So kind of piano sound turning into a guitar, into an electric guitar. Okay, so you kind of get the idea of how we can do concatenative synthesis on a single layer. Now, we also have the possibility of using both layers, A and B, to create control over the transient separate from the body. So right now, if we uh, filter this, we're filtering both the transient and the body. And if we wanted to add any other parameters, say effects, LFOs, it's gonna affect both the transient and the body of the sound. But if we use two layers, that gives us full control over shaping the timbre of the transient separate from the body of the sound. So how might we do this? Well, if we go into our timing lane, and let's go to our first step. Let's just change the uh, 
the loop start, loop end to A1. Just leave it at A1. And instead of our timing being note, don't make it rest. That's just no sound whatsoever. I want to make it gate. So what gate does is that it only plays that one step. So if you don't want the steps to continue, it just stops right there. And so let's also make our, uh, so you can still hear that there's some guitar in there. Let's uh, change our sample lane down to A1. So now we only have the piano. So now we have our piano sound in layer A. Now it's a little bit too long. So let's change our amplitude envelope so that we have just the attack. Really short decay. Then we go into our layer B. So this is also initial performance. Let's change this to loop just at A1. And we'll choose uh, Let's choose another woodwind just for the sake of clarity. Something like flute. So right now you can't really hear the piano because the flute's so loud. So what we can do is we can hit enter. Let's change our amplitude envelope so that we have, so that the envelope, you kind of need to get this, you can just adjust this to your liking. And what this allows us to do is to control the body. Separate from our, uh, separate from our attack. So you can add effects, you can change the compressor, you can you know, do all sorts of things to distinguish these two parts of the sound, but they still fuse together because uh, they're close enough temporally that our, our brain interprets them as being part of the same sound. And of course, yeah, we can add kind of reverb and delay, which further help uh, gel the sound together. Anyways, those are the two ways that we can really do what the wave state is meant to do in some sense, where we can use our sample lane and get the timing just right to isolate the attack, isolate the body, use the loop start loop endpoint so that we don't play the transient over and over again. And so if you want to use the wave state in an, the way that it may have been originally intentioned or perhaps the kind of like basis for this particular synthesis architecture, this is how you can take two completely different sounds, clarinet, piano, uh, you know, synthesizer and uh, banjo, whatever random samples you might be using. You can have the initial part of one sound become the attack, the transient of the second sound so that they fuse together and create a whole new sound that uh, no one's ever heard before. So I hope you found that tutorial helpful. I hope it gave you a basic understanding of what concatenative synthesis or wave sequencing synthesis is and how it can be used. And uh, I hope it gave you some creative inspiration for sound design and exploring. Uh, so there's gonna be more tutorials to come. Uh, there was a little break for a second because I was setting up a new studio, uh, but there's more tutorials on the way. So if you found this helpful or informative, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.